said and what he did. It, it's so tremendous. And so there's a sense that uh, uh, the, the story, the, the gospel, the good news that comes to us came through a process of people really sharing the story first with each other by word of mouth, with the excitement in their voices and in their lives. And it was sometimes even a hundred years later before the stories were written down. Um, and so, so much had happened and so much came uh, in, into building uh, the, the gospels that we have in, in front of us. And, uh, and, and it's the essence of Jesus' teaching, but it's not the full meaning of Jesus' teaching. So what I tried to do with the, uh, the epiphany story is to, is to really show as you read it, uh, and I, I, I printed it out for you, as you read it, there's this horrendous side of the story of Herod and uh, of, um, of all the, the tragi tragic things that were happening at that time. You spoke about that yesterday. And yet, out of that uh, uh, came in the most unusual and amazing and miraculous circumstances the birth of a little baby boy. And that was we don't remember Herod, you know. We, we, we uh, try not even re to recall the horror of, of that time or, or the times that have come since. But we remember the baby boy who came. Epiphany, I, I wanted to uh, uh, share. Uh, I, I had gone to a retreat in northern Vermont before I came here, and I, and I said I was going to um, with you in the early morning worship, and we talked about Epiphany. And this group of men from Middletown Meeting in Pennsylvania went to Northern Maine, uh, no, Northern uh, Vermont. I can't even remember where I was, but um, grew up up there, and we talked about the, the Epiphany idea. And, and we came down to there were three three things that it was. They all start with O, by the way. It's an opening. God comes, Emmanuel, God is present. God comes. We don't go to God, God comes to us. God really, you might even say, God the, the lonely lover who witnesses humankind and his creation being brutalized, uh, thought, thoughtless actions on the part of one to another, the destruction of the world, the lonely lover yearning for our love as human beings, wanting us to respond. So that's the opening that God gives, the opening that we would respond to what God has to say to us and set us on the path of, of the good news. The early Christians were... Um, they didn't call themselves Christians, they called themselves the people of the way. That meant that when they walked the way of Christ, they were doing God's work. And it was because of this sense of the opening that came to each and every life that changed their life, that gave them the courage to, to preach the good news, to give out the good news, the evangelism means to call out the good news of God opening, God comes to us. And then when God comes, there is the, um, the second part of that, which is part of the human response, which is opportunity. We're offered the opportunity. That's a favorite Quaker word, isn't it? Opportunity. We, we're given this opportunity of, of having this opening that has the potential of changing our life we can take it, or we can reject it. Or we can say, or if we reject it, we say, well, we're just going to go on with the same old stuff. But if we take it, our life is going to change dramatically. So it's opportunity. We're offered the opportunity. And the third O that we came up with was obedience. In other words, if 
this message comes true to us and the challenge is there, we're obedient in our lives to carry this call, to carry this message wherever it's called, even in places of great danger and tribulation for the idea that God will has a victory through the message of Christ. So in, in a way, this, this, uh, this is, I, I like that, that definition that my friends, that this group of men in this retreat uh, helped me see through because it really does explain the idea of the epiphany, of that moment of opening that God gives us that can change our lives. I'd like to um, just think of a story in Matthew because there are, are several moments of epiphany in it. And I'm going to uh, try to imagine because some of this isn't written down. There's, there's, there's some that, that we can ponder. And uh, there, there's certainly a, a, a tremendous amount of action behind the scenes in the story if we were living th at that time. I'd like you to think of Joseph. We, we, we talked about Mary this morning, Mother Mary. Joseph. Joseph had several openings in, in the epiphany experience. The first opening was he was struggling with the idea, and you mentioned it yesterday. He had a young, a young woman he loved. And he, but he, he knew she was with child. And he, and he struggled with that idea. What should I do? I love this woman. I take her for my wife. But what will, what will my neighbor say? Or what will, and the what wills came to the mind. And then, you know, uh, the, the idea of the angel, because many times it says in the, in the Epiphany story, the angel came. The angel, and I think you mentioned this uh, yesterday. Well, we were right in the same wavelength because it, the angel means messenger. Messenger of God. And the angel came and said to, to Joseph, take this woman and love her. And so he did, and then they, they took that long journey down to, to Bethlehem, the city of David, meaning the house of bread in the old Hebrew language. And the first part of the story of the, of, of the baby being born in the barn. Then I'd like to just uh, focus on one little word in that story that, that got me in trouble one time in the Old Country Church. <laughs> I said that um, when the three wise men came, they came to a house, and a woman came up to me afterwards, and it does, it says right here in the scriptures, came to a house. No, my little crash in my living room, they were in a barn. I figured maybe we would have wanted to believe, uh, she would have wanted to believe that part of it, that the, the wise men came to the barn. But it came to a house. And then I, I pondered that in the, in the terms of epiphany, because the messenger can come in many ways. And I'd like to think that there was this woman that came to visit Hepzibah in Bethlehem town and said, did you hear the story? That there was this baby born in the barn. And Hepzibah said, no, that's not right. And she said to her husband, Ezekiel, you go up to that barn and you tell that, that uh, mother and father to bring that baby down here in my house and I'll give them the spare room. That's what I read in a, one word. How we came from a house to a barn, from a barn to a house. Offering in a sense that wonderful hospitality, which was really part of the culture of that people. And the, and the other uh, part of that was the uh, coming of the 
banded scholars, it says in the message, is called, they call it banded scholars, and you know, and there's another place where I got in trouble with with another woman in the church, it's actually caused it quite a stir, because they said, I said there, I don't know how many wives, but a band of scholars there were. People say there were only three, but for the same thing like that here. I said, it might have been five, it might have been a whole, and probably it was a whole caravan of people, neighbors and friends traveling. They, they somehow had got a message, an epiphany. Maybe it was somebody who brought the message of Isaiah about there will be a, 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 a baby born who will be a, a wonderful counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God. And they wondered about that. And this was amazing to them. They may have been Bedouins. They weren't Jews. They were the first, this is the first experience of, of non-Jews or, or what they call Gentiles coming to the Jesus story. And so they may, they, they wanted to know what this was all about. For this epiphany, they didn't just stay back in their, at their home and say, oh, isn't that a nice message? They wanted to know and they wanted to witness. They knew enough of, of what was told to them that they would go to Bethlehem in Palestine to see, to offer their gifts. And I often think that if they traveled in the caravan, the women were out gathering up diapers and swaddling cloths to give to that little baby, besides the gold, frankincense, and myrrh. It was epiphany. It somehow they got the message from the messenger, some messenger that came along, excited about the message from Isaiah. That, that's my interpretation of how that happened. And then there was um, a horrible part of the story, the horror that rose from it when Herod, who murdered his wife and oldest son, a, uh, a man of little moral consideration, tried to find out from these travelers where this baby was to be born, because he knew from Isaiah, you know, the Prince of Peace, the mighty father, would be born in Bethlehem. And when the band was told by another messenger to go another way back to their home, another epiphany, Herod grew angry and decided to murder all of the babies on the two. And somebody, and, and I've often wondered about this, somebody, a messenger, must have heard this and warned the people of what was happening. And Joseph knew it in the dream, again, in the dream. And the messenger said, Rise, get up, go, bring this baby to safety in Egypt. Don't wait, do it now. And he did it. He obeyed and went out of the dream. And so, to me, the epiphany which comes to us as well as in, in this ancient story is it's a story of the opening of God coming encountering us of our taking an opportunity and of our being obedient to the call. I just wanted to share a little story with you, a personal story of an epiphany. When I was a, a, a young adult, An African-American pastor, just retired, came to the little town I lived in to take a little a, a church that was failing. He was sent down there to close the church up and tear it down. 
but instead because he was a powerful preacher and a man who knew what it was to, to speak to the condition of the people. He even was written up in one of the national magazines as the only African-American pastor in an all-white congregation. They established this young adult youth group that I became part of. I wasn't even a member of this church. But he decided to retire. He couldn't do it. He had a heart condition. He decided to retire and talk to his God. And when the, and when the time came to retire, they had the, the conference, congregational conference, sent down, was going to send down a pastor for candidate, as they call it, into the new churches. But the night before, he was, the, the, the new guy was to come on. He got he, he uh, McCall got me he got me and said I just got a uh, call from a big church big inner city church and I'm not going to come to your church this little country church I'm going to pass to that one Doc Eacock who was the messenger in my case called me about nine o'clock that night never I had never preached before <laughs> and he said Ralph he says. The preacher said he wasn't going to come tomorrow. I, you are going to be in that pulpit. <laughs> I never preached a sermon in my life. I said, I can't do it. He said, you get there. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's the way it happened. He said, you're, you're going to college. I just started college. He said, you must have something to say. <laughs> so anyway, I showed up and I waited down in the uh, little Sunday school room, and I picked up a teddy bear, absentmindedly. <laughs> and I forgot I had the teddy bear in my arm, and I turned it down from the aisle to go to the pulpit. And I preached the sermon. Dr. Heathcock was there. They took the road, that little, uh, the church was full because we built the church up to stand in the moment. Church had a meeting right afterwards and hired me as their preacher. Ah. <laughs> and I've been doing it ever since for 60 years. <laughs> That's the true story. And and you know, you just say, and 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 it's the epiphany. It's God coming to a message. It doesn't have to be an angel somewhere up there. It can be us, me and you. And the little things we do, giving out the good news, the challenge of the good news. Dr. Heacock was a messenger in my case. And I had all sorts of adventures about that, and I'm sitting here today because of it. So I praise God for that. The epiphany happens, happens to each and every one of us. The hard part is to recognize it as an opportunity, and the harder part is to be obedient to the call. Amen. 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 Should we sing our